I really think the best of me came from um, a period of my life, right? I'm hitting my 40s. And as you hit your 40s, it, it, it's a very interesting period to me. It, it's a period that's really got a lot of choices that you have to make. It's I always say it's one of the hardest periods. It's when you're in your 20s and 30s, you think that all of your dreams can come true, right? When you're in your 50s, 60s, and 70s, maybe not so much. Maybe you've accepted the fact that they won't. So this 40s is this period where you kind of hit this moment when you say, is this my life? Have I made the right decisions? And of course, the best of me sprouted from that. It is someone, it's a story about a woman and, and, and a man, and they fell in love a long time ago. And now here she is, she's 20 years into her marriage to someone else. And, and she wonders, you know, is this how I want to spend the rest of my life? Is this what I'm meant to do and be? And to me, that's a very universal concept to explore. The Best of Me is the story of, of two people. It's about uh, Dawson and Amanda, and uh, they were high school sweethearts. They were deeply in love. Unfortunately, it didn't work out so long ago. They go their separate ways, and uh, 20 years later, they're there's a, a funeral, essentially, a funeral of an old friend, and they reunite, reunite for a short period of time in this town where they'd first fallen in, fallen in love. And I hate to say more than that because you, know, you want to watch the film. You want to see what happens. What's the detail? But I, I, if you were deeply in love and you, find, you meet someone again, you realize that the feelings are still there, you might be able to imagine what happens. Dawson is a, an interesting character, one of, one of the more favorite characters I've created. He's, he's a good, strong, silent type. You're, he's, your, he's your guy's guy, right? He works on an oil rig, he's, and that's what he does. You know? And, and he, the opening of the film is very exciting. There's an explosion on one of these deep sea rigs, and he finds himself uh, thrown off the rig, and we don't know how he survives. He should be dead, and you know, he gets out of the hospital, and sure enough, there is a uh, a phone call saying, you know, one of these people who meant so much to you in your life early on, really your mentor, has passed away and, you know, you've been requested to come to the funeral. And so he heads back to town. But it says that this is a guy who, who had a very hard upbringing, right? He had a very tough family life and he found, I guess, a reason to move forward and be everything he could be because of this girl he met in high school who he deeply loved, but fate wouldn't let them be together. Amanda is from a very typical home, you know, a wealthier family, and here she is 20 years later, and she's married, and she's got, you know, a son, and it seems like a wonderful life. They have a beautiful house, and yet uh, she's not entirely satisfied that she's happy, right? I think that that's a very ordinary experience. She's not necessarily horribly unhappy, but she's not necessarily happy either. And of course, she gets this notice to attend a funeral of a, of a dear friend in the town where she grew up, and she goes back, and she comes across, and she sees again the, the, the guy she used to love, right? And it's interesting because she's got this life it's set up from the outside it probably looks perfect it looks the neighbors would say oh that looks like the perfect family and yet there's something in there inside her that's saying you know this isn't necessarily enough i don't know that this is my life for the rest for the rest of my years on this planet one of the things that Michael's really known for is just his ability to work with actors and to get them to dig deeper and deeper, to rehearse and to try new things, and then let's put it on camera and, oh, let's go a little deeper and deeper until every scene literally brings to life a myriad of emotions, all this complexity. And you can see that in his previous work, you know, like The Last Station, and of course, you see it uh, through in virtually every scene in this film. This is a film that I think audiences will connect with on any number of levels. First, it's a great love story. It's got young love and exciting love, and, and that's, of course, wonderful. But it's also a story about second chances. It's a story about the choices we make. It's a story about who we are and who we want to be. And it's a story about the past and how it stays with us always. And of course, these are elements 
that are in everyone's life. And so the key to make a, a film like The Best of Me is to take these very universal themes that everyone experiences and to put them in a story that brings them all to life.